Brother Roman and Brother Russell, we were talking, and I had already made my title to my message, and Brother Roman began to share with me what the t Sunday school was about, basically the same thing. Hallelujah. How many of you know God wor God's word works together? Hallelujah. Praise God. It works together for good for those who love him. Praise God. Brother Tony put Ephesians 3 and 20 real quick. Now we're going to jump back into the Old Testament for a minute or two. Hallelujah. Now unto him that is able, read with me this morning. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Now, I would encourage you, if you haven't already done it, to take that scripture and either print it somewhere where you get up every morning and you can read it, or if you know it by heart, say it every morning when you get out of bed. Hallelujah. Say it and encourage yourself in the word of God. How many can say amen that God is able? Hallelujah. The enemy will try to get in your mind. He'll try to get within you and try to deter you from the word of God. Hallelujah. But my God is able to do exceedingly. What's exceedingly? Above and beyond. Of what we ask or think. My God is able. Hallelujah. Now turn with me this morning, Brother Tony. Put Jeremiah 29 up there. The 11. It's a scripture that we read many times before we go into the word of God. But I want to use this as my scripture this morning. Now, we quote it in a different manner. Because where I quote it from is from the NIV version. And I want to read it from there this morning. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Look at your neighbors more and say plans. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. God has a plan for each and every one of us. How many can say amen this morning? Hallelujah. Now, Jeremiah was a prophet of God that was called from his mother's womb. You can go into the first chapter, and it, he, he tells Jeremiah, he said, I called you even before you were born. I had a purpose for your life even before you were born. And we know the scripture, and Jeremiah says, I don't know what to say. I don't know. I don't know how to speak it. I don't know. And God takes it. God takes his excuses away from him. How many can say amen? But the purpose of Jeremiah as the prophet at this particular time, the children of Israel, God's chosen people, they were wandering away from God. How many can say amen? Hallelujah. And they had they were serving other gods, man-made gods, things that they had formed with hands. And they were serving them and putting them before God. And the number one commandment is, I will have no other gods before me. Now, the children of Israel, they knew what, it, what, the, what the true God was. But they wanted something that you, was obtainable, obtainable by hand. Something that they could get a hold of. Something that they could see. Even when, they, when Moses went unto the Mount, Mount Sinai to, read, to receive the Ten Commandments, when he came back down from the mountain, they had taken gold and they had taken things and they created an, they created an idol. How I many can say amen? And, I, and when, they, when Moses came back down, he destroyed it. He got upset. Even God got to the point that I'm sorry. I ever created. But Moses reminded him of who he was and what his word said. How many can say amen? But they were still God's chosen people. And Jeremiah was called and Jeremiah was a prophet to draw God's people back unto him. And we can read through the, chapter, through the book of Jeremiah to where he even took him into the potter's house and tell my people, I want to form within them what I want. 
I want to be the potter of their lives. I want to be the potter of, I want to be the maker of who they are. How many can say amen? And he said, even though as he took him into the potter's house and he had a representation for everything, we'll fall off the wheel every once in a while. As he took him into the potter's house and the potter began to form the vessel that he was making, And he said, as it got mired, he didn't disregard the clay. But he took the same clay that got mired and began to reform it. When we fall off and we get a little bit mired, God doesn't discard us. And thank God he don't. How many can say amen this morning? He doesn't lay us aside, but he wants to reform us as he wants us to be. Hallelujah. And one of the things that God did when he created us out of love, he gave us our own will. So sometimes our own will gets us in trouble. Sometimes our own will has us, causes us to walk away. Sometimes our own will, Carmenta, will put a wedge. Hallelujah. But God is always there ready to receive us back. God is always there ready to reform us. Oh, hallelujah. Many times when a Christian walks away from God, man wants to discard him. Man wants to put them down. But God wants us to lift them up. Hallelujah. Jesus wants us to lift them up. There was, there was times when even people in our congregation had back sets. And there was those that wanted to put them on the back seat. But God wanted them to bring them back to the front. Oh, Hallelujah. God wanted them to continue in what they were doing for him. How can you go wrong by going back to what God had placed you in in the beginning of time, but our will causes us to get sidestepped? Hallelujah. Glory to God. It doesn't mean that we backslid. It don't mean that we're going to hell, but we get sidetracked of God's plan. Hallelujah. I work construction. And when you go in for a permit, you got to have a plan. You got to have drawings. And when you go in to receive the permit, you cannot deter, you can't go away from what the drawings show. If you go, if you make something different than what the drawings show, you have to reapply for the permit. Why? Because of the plan that was presented was what was accepted. God has given us a plan, but many times we want to change the plan in the middle of the stream. Hallelujah. God will not reapply. Hallelujah. But we've got to go back and reapply. Mm, hallelujah. And we got to get back in the plan of God because God is the same yesterday, today, forevermore. Until he comes back and splits those eastern skies. And in the twinkling of an eye, mm, hallelujah, he's going to call us home to be with him. Mm. His plan hasn't changed. God, I thank you. Well, I was praying. I was having breakfast with God. And he changed my mind. God's mind don't change. Hallelujah. He has one purpose for us. And that's to glorify his name. Hallelujah. He called us to go into the world. And compel them to come into the house of the Lord. Amen. 
That's what our job is. It's been since Christ came onto this earth, hallelujah, to compel them to come in to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Not just to be a book that we read one day in our nursery. Not just be something that we studied in Bible school, hallelujah, but let it become life within us. Let it become life, hallelujah. How, it would train up a child in the way it should go, and it may stray, but it will return. Hallelujah. God has get, promised us our seed and our seed seed. Hallelujah. So your prayers, hallelujah, just because you don't see it happening right now, Carmetta, you believe that it's going to happen. Hallelujah. Just, just because it's not in your sights yet, God's already got a plan. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're not going to change God's plan. And as Jeremiah went through the days, he how many's ever got discouraged? Jeremiah got to the point he got tired of doors getting shut in his face. How many's have ever had a Jehovah Witness come to your house? Praise God, I had one come to my house one time. I was washing my car. They began to give me their spiel gave them my spiel. Hallelujah. They were ready to leave. So all you got to do is give the word of God. Hallelujah. Give them the word of God. And, when they, and they do quote scriptures to you. Hallelujah. Just go right along with them and add to it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If the spirit doesn't bear witness, if the spirit don't bear witness, Brother Russell, they'll go. Hallelujah. But Jeremiah got to the point that he didn't want to witness anymore. He didn't want to preach the word of God anymore. He didn't want to compel them to come anymore. But he couldn't shut up. He said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. God, I'm not going to do it anymore. If you're called, hallelujah, you can't, you can't shut it up. Hallelujah. God will cause it to come out even when you're drunk. Hallelujah. God will even cause the word to come out even when you're walking in a place you shouldn't walk. Hallelujah. He'll remind you of that word that you used to walk in. I serve a God this morning that won't let you forget who you are in him. Hallelujah. I serve a great God. But as you go into the cha if you go in chapter 29 and verse 11, Brother Tony, for I know the thoughts I have for you. Let me read it from my scripture this morning in the NIV version. It says, for I know the plans I have for you. Declares the Lord, plans to prosper you. Now this is when the children of Israel after the 70 years in Babylon. And they were coming out. And God was using Jeremiah to prophesy to them. I, I know the plans I have for you. To prosper you. Now even while they were in. They weren't slaves. But they were taken as refugees. And there was those that even prospered in that particular time. God will even bless you when you're walking where you shouldn't be. Because you're his child. They were God's chosen people. And Jeremiah is just reminding them, God wants to bless you. God loves you. Even when we're at our worst, God still loves us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's all about love, for God so loved the world. Look at your neighbor this morning and say, you used to be the world. You used to be of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. He even loved us before we knew him. Hallelujah! That's the kind of God I serve. He loves the drunkard that's in the ditch. He loves the drug addict that's shooting up. Hallelujah! He loves the murderer. He 
It takes love to draw. Hallelujah. But how can he forgive all that? God will forgive anything except blaspheming against the Holy Ghost, blaspheming against his word. Amen. And he said, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Next verse, Brother Tony. Then shall ye call upon me. Hallelujah. God put stipulations on it. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. Hallelujah. And I will hearken unto you. Too many times we just want to read that one scripture. But there's requirements to receive of what that scripture says. We can't live any old way we want to and expect God to be there all the time. He who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall what? Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. We have to make a residence in God's house. Now, I'm not talking about this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to be the residents of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We have to be the house of the Holy Ghost. Glory. Then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Next verse, Tony. And ye shall seek me and find me. And when shall ye search for me with all your heart? Hallelujah. What was he saying? When you come back to me. When you come back to me. This will be yours. Hallelujah. Praise God. God has plans. We can look through the scripture. We can, we can look and see where we question. Was this a part of God's plan? When you go into the book of Daniel. When Daniel went into the lion's den. Was that a part of God's plan? Yes, it was. Why did he throw him in with the lions? When the law was put down, you shall not worship any other than the king. Daniel prayed anyhow. Mm, hallelujah. Daniel prayed anyhow. Even when he knew what the new law that was brought into commission. how Why? Because of what he was doing. Because he was worshiping his God. And he wasn't worshiping the man. Hallelujah. But he was worshiped the one and true God. And they made a law. Anybody that worships anybody but the king. Hallelujah. Will be thrown in the lion's den. Did that stop Daniel? No it didn't stop Daniel. So therefore he got put into the lion's den. Hallelujah. God had a plan in the matter. Because as he got thrown into the lion's den. Oh glory. The king came and he opened the lion's den the next morning and he was expecting to see nothing but little pieces of him. Oh, hallelujah. But when he opened the lion's den and he seen that Daniel was safe. Oh, hallelujah. He was glad. He was happy. Why? Because he knew who he was. He knew that he was a child of God. He knew that he trusted the one and true God. Hallelujah. So therefore it was a part of God's plan. When it's a part of God's plan, you might get thrown in the lion's den, but you will not be devoured. You might get thrown into a situation, but you won't be devoured. As long as you stand upon the word of God, hallelujah, you'll come out victoriously. Oh, hallelujah. And the lions will have to lay by the side. Mm, hallelujah. What are you talking about, lions? I'm talking about the people that try to chew you up, spit you out. Hallelujah. There's lions in this world today, and they don't have big manes on them. Hallelujah. 
There's people who would love to see you fall. There's people that just keeps a focus on you. Hallelujah. Just to watch you mess up. Friday we were insulating the job. And we were doing stuff and something wasn't going my way. So I just threw it down and walked away from it. Everybody got quiet. But I didn't say nothing. I said, I ain't doing it. Even while you're in anger, the word says sin not. Why? Because people are watching you. So if we can go through things and it doesn't affect our witness, life's not perfect. There's going to be times you just want to throw your hands up and just walk away. Hallelujah. But we've got to stand firm in the word of God, knowing who we are in him. Hallelujah. Daniel knew who his God was. So he stood firm, knowing that God was going to bring him through. Hallelujah, when Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood before the fiery furnace and, and Nebuchadnezzar said, you will bow down. I won't bow down to you. I'm not bowing down to any golden image. My God said he won't have any other gods before him. And I'm going to live according to what my God said. If we can take a stand in our walk in life, hallelujah, it might seem like we're getting thrown in the furnace. Hallelujah. It might seem like we're in a place of discomfort. But as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, I'm not bowing down. And there was tattletales. Nebuchadnezzar never seen it till those said, hey, 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 hey. You know these guys over there, those three guys that you put in charge? They're not even of your kingdom. They're Jews. Refugees. And they're not going to bow down to you? What are you going to do about it? Give them another chance. You play with them, Google. Of course, they stood tall. Everybody else was bowing. You will stand out being a child of God. Hallelujah. Let me put it this way. You should stand out when you're a child of God. Hallelujah. But when they were not bowing, and they stood and worshiped their God, Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar says, you will bow down. No, I won't bow down. I'm talking God's plan this morning. Hallelujah. The plans of God always aren't favorable to the flesh. We go through things in this life wondering why you put me through this, God. Why you allow me to get through this, Lord. Heat the furnace seven times hotter. Nebuchadnezzar didn't know seven was God's perfect number. Nebuchadnezzar didn't know that the number of completion was seven. Hallelujah. And he said, heat that furnace seven times hotter. And he said, well, you now bow down. No, king, we're not bowing down. My God will bring us through. Even if. Even if he don't, I'm still not bowing down. 
because I'm not going against the word of God. I'm not going against the commandments of God. Hallelujah. My God is above you. Mm, hallelujah. He's the God of gods. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's all powerful. He's the mighty God. And in him I will trust. Oh, hallelujah. They stood upon the word of God. They stood upon the promises of God. Even if it doesn't go our way. Don't go back on your faith. Even if you have to walk through the fire, don't go back on your faith. Even if you don't get what you think you should get, serve him anyhow. Even if, oh, hallelujah, things are taken away, give him praise anyhow because he know that he'll give you even greater than what you had before. Mm, God, I praise you. Even if. And we know the story. They got thrown into the fiery furnace. The word of God says that even consumed the soldiers that was putting them in the fire. God will consume those that are trying to handle you. God will consume those that are trying to tear you down. Oh, hallelujah. Don't worry about it. God, I thank you. Too many times we want to fight them. But the word of God doesn't show that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego even tried to fight them. Hallelujah. They walked in the fire in confidence. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As they entered that door of the furnace, and it consumed the men. Mm, hallelujah. And they didn't feel heat. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And they walked into the furnace. When they walked into the furnace, they were bound. And when they got into the furnace, the only thing that burnt upon them was what had them bound. Hallelujah. The only thing that came off and burnt was what had them bound. What Nebuchadnezzar had placed upon them. Hallelujah. You'll walk through the fire, but you won't get harmed. Oh, hallelujah. You can go into the furnace, but the only thing that's going to fall away from you is what the enemy is trying to put upon you. I'm talking about God's plan this morning. As long as we can stand upon his word and believe it, even if, mm, God, I thank you, I can't see him working. I know that he's working. Hallelujah. Even if it seems like I'm losing, I know I'm the winner and not the, mm, God, I thank you, and not the loser. I'm the head and not the tail. God, I praise you. He told me he'll make me the lender and not the borrow, even if. Nebuchadnezzar looked in there. He said, There's, didn't we put three in there? Oh, hallelujah. Look at your neighbor this morning and say, there's a fourth. Mm, hallelujah, there's a fourth. And he says, he looked in, he said, there's a fourth one in there, like it unto the Son of God. Oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, like it unto the Son of God. And the word said, when they came out of the furnace, Nebuchadnezzar pulled them out of the furnace. And when they come out of the furnace, the word says, they didn't even smell like smoke. Oh, hallelujah, not even a hair singed on their heads. Hallelujah. Um, the enemy battles will not even touch you. They might be around you, but they will not harm you. Glory, hallelujah. As long as you stand upon the word of God and walk in the plan of God. Dad started the church down on 142 North George Street. We worked on the building for quite some time. And we started, had our first service. Before the first service, Dad went up to the door and unlocked it. And somebody had come and put powders upon the door handles, trying to put a curse. Hallelujah. <laughs> it all 
he did is went. <laughs> the devil, you have no power. Hallelujah. Enemy, you have no authority. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we enter that building and begin to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The city come against him and tried to shut us down. But hallelujah, he gave him favor with one particular lawyer. And as that, as that lawyer took care of things, God will put you in the places that you need to be. It might not be people called G, might not be people called a child of God. God, but it will be who God needs to put you with to make things happen that he wants to happen to bring his plan into progress. Hallelujah. God, I praise you. He could have walked away at that particular time, but he said, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good all the time. Nebuchadnezzar said, we will serve the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God will prove himself to be the one and true God. Hallelujah. If you stand upon his word, his word is truth. Hallelujah. God's plan. When he spoke to Samuel and told him, pick me the next king. Samuel went through all of Jesse's boys. The big and brawny. Not the ones. The ones that appealed to the flesh that should be wasn't the ones. Jesse, do you have any other sons? Yes, my youngest is tending the sheep. He's a shepherd. Hallelujah. He's a good-looking little fella. That's my baby. Well, get him over here. And Samuel anointed him as to be the next king. God will prepare you for what's coming. David was prepared by keeping the sheep of the to keeping the sheep of the Father. Hallelujah. God will make preparations through us before he puts us into something. How many can say amen? In God's plans. Hallelujah. And as David stepped in position, there was those that didn't like it. His brothers. Mm, hallelujah. Sometimes the closest ones to you will come against you the greatest. But you don't let it bother you. Let God take care of it. Hallelujah. Because when David, Jesse told him, said, here, take up some snacks for the boys and while they're in battle. We know the story when David went against Goliath. God had a plan. It wasn't man's plan. Because when he went... And he said, who is this uncircumcised giant that's coming against God's chosen people? Hallelujah. Saul began to put, try to put his armor upon him. God has his own suit of armor. Hallelujah. He don't need man's suit of armor to put upon you. Because he'll put upon you what you need to have upon you to do what God wants you to do. How many can say amen? Saul had the armor upon himself, but he couldn't win the battle. Fear was in the hearts of Saul and all the troops. How many can say amen? When David come upon the scene just to visit, he took control. Why? Because it was a part of God's plan. He was not only showing the giant and the ones that was coming against God's chosen people, but he was showing God's chosen people how mighty he was. 
Because when David went against Goliath, he didn't go against Goliath with spear and sword. Mm, hallelujah. When he stood against Goliath, Brother Russell, he just had his slingshot and three smooth stones that he took from the brook. The tools of God. What he was familiar with. Hallelujah. God won't put something upon you that you're not familiar with. But he'll give you the tools that you need prior to going into the situation. And as he went to Goliath, he said, what's this little ruddy? You look like a dog. Goliath, I don't come to you with spear and sword, but I come to you in the name of my Lord. I don't need all the male stature. I don't need the soldier in front of me with a, with a guard, a shield standing from them. But I got the shield, hallelujah, that you can't see. I got the shield protecting me, hallelujah, that I don't need to fear you. I got the shield upon my life from head to toe that's going to give me protection of what you have to come against me. Hallelujah. And the enemy told him, he said, I'm going to take your head. Mm, God, I thank you and I praise you. That God will cause you to take the tool the enemy is trying to bring against you and cause you to be victorious over top of your enemy. Mm, God, I thank you. He took the sword after he took that stone and flinged that stone in front and hit the enemy to the point he dropped. Then he took Goliath's sword and took his head. Took his head and put it upon the sword. Look what my God can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm victorious because my mighty God. It's not because of me, but it's because my Savior. Hallelujah. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ, which giveth me strength. Hallelujah. We can't do anything without God. He is our strength. He is our fortress. How many can say amen? He is our refuge. He should be our dwelling place. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet this morning.